Yes, my dudes, we never have to hear. Ever again, it's a great day to be alive. Oh, I forgot you have to spend half the freaking time of the EA Access trial playing freaking tutorials, dude. Get me out of here. Very well, maybe something Titans related coming on the channel later today. But first rebuild we are doing for Madden 22 does include last year's worst team. And that is none other than the Jacksonville Jaguars coming in at a 79 overall. Not necessarily the lowest overall team, but they had the number one pick. They have Tip Tebow, they have Trevor Lawrence, have a bunch of young superstars, a team I expect for us to maybe even win the Super Bowl with today. Today's rebuild is going to last a max of five years, but if we win the Super Bowl before the five-year mark, that's the challenge completed. How do they not have Urban Meyer's face in the game? So all this so far, I think is the same. Now we've got to see before I name him. Is Mr. Bubbles still in the game? Where's Mr. Bubbles? I'm about to get so sad. Rose, I don't see Mr. Bubbles anywhere. Cliff, come here. This is going to influence my videos for the entire year. Mr. Bubbles is gone. Can't find his face anywhere. We just gotta name this guy. So we're gonna use him for every single video from now on. No pressure. It wasn't supposed to be this complicated. Give me a name. Give me a name. Come on. Hurry. First thing. What do you see when you look at his face? Come on. What's he look like? Sylvester. Sylvester! Ha <laughs> ha! There you have it, boys. Mr. Sylvester's gonna take the Jags to a Super Bowl. Yeah, Mr. Bubbles was so much easier. Mr. Sylvester. He just does not look like a happy camper. You can press it. First time going into a Madden 22 franchise. Press the A button. This is a moment that's gonna go down in history and boom! It's a brand new year, a brand new season with brand new possibilities. It's electric around the channel. First thing I gotta see, hold on, what is Tim Tebow's overall? Is he even, he's gotta be in the game, right? Trevor Lawrence, 78, that's solid. And Tim Tebow's a 66. Okay, Timothy, fair play. If you guys wanna see a video where I convert him to quarterback, let me know in the comment section below. And really quick, while we're sitting here looking at the team a little bit, I do want you guys to know I am gonna be streaming on my second channel. Link in the description box below, probably in about an hour or so. So if you guys are interested, go to the RBTV channel. There's going to be a bunch of content on the other channels as well today. So you can go click the subscribe button in the description box below to all my channels. But for the most part, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is going to remain our starting quarterback throughout the duration of this rebuild as max of five years. The reason we are maxing it out at five years and not until we win a Super Bowl, if it took 10 years, is because uh, we have limited time on EA Access, bro. So the team honestly isn't that bad, dude. A bunch of young pieces. I like the wide receiver core. Seriously. Marvin Jones, DJ Chark. You have Chenault Jr., who I also think is going to be a stud moving forward. So three great wide receivers. And you add, you know, Tavon Austin for depth. Same thing with Philip Dorsett. And at running back, you have one of the best stories from last year, James Robinson, 86 rated, who I think is still going to lead the attack. You have Travis Etienne. I thought he was listed as a wide receiver in the game, but he'll probably play slot force potentially. Or maybe it's Jin Holt. He'll get some playing time at wide receiver. But at the same time, Carlos Hyde, I don't want him. We might end up trading him on. This will be a mixture of realism and not being realistic too. Some trades you might not think would actually happen in real life. It's just going to be fun. All about having fun today. Trying to make this team a winner. Offensive line, solid. Maybe could use a better right tackle potentially. But I think, I think maybe if we upgrade the tight end position. I do want to keep Tim Tebow just because it's Tim Tebow. But this offense, I think already is set up in a way where it can be very good in just a few years. Same thing defense. Like a bunch of young studs. Maybe can improve the safety position. Maybe, I really like Cisco though. Maybe can improve the D-line. But linebacker solid. Secondary isn't horrible. I mean, actually really good. A bunch of good young corners. So this is a team with a few moves. I think could be at least a player off contender just a year or two now really quick as a little test i do want to go in and see is tim tebow's face scan even in the game i feel like there's no way they are gonna miss out on the chance for tim tebow's face scan to be in the game oh my god that's tim tebow are you serious now i know we have a really good cap situation here as well now i do want to go see is there any free agents maybe we could show some money to maybe add to the roster but to manage roster of free agents because everything is completely moved around now so i apologize if i take some time navigating through the menu Used, getting used to it because I literally, you guys saw me load into Madden 22 for the first freaking time. Maybe a David DeCastro type of presence on that offensive line could be solved. Can we, we still can't sign free agents for more than one year. I mean, like, it's David DeCastro, bro. Like, you have a chance to sign him with the amount of salary we have. Let's grab him. Well, maybe a Jarrell Casey kind of guy. I could see him fitting in in Jacksonville. We've actually seen a few Titans who weren't too happy with how the end of their Titan career went. 
and they ended up going to Jacksonville, especially like Kamala Correa, some other guys. So Jarrell Casey with how he was shipped on for a seventh round pick. I could see him signing with the Jags. If anything, they're one year fillers. Probably not going to go far this year anyway. I completely forgot that we have like staff now. So do we use this as part of rebuilds? Like, do I focus on getting the best coordinator possible? We'll see. We'll see. Like, this is the first time I've witnessed this, like actually playing it. So we have to see how we kind of implement like the whole entire coaching tree into the rebuild. I just now know that that our head coach and our defensive coordinator are twins. So first bit of business, what we are gonna do, I think it's a realistic move, is finding a trade partner for Gardner Minshew. We all know Trevor Lawrence is starting, he's the future. Gardner Minshew's not a bad quarterback. He could definitely be a positive improvement to some team out there looking for a quarterback. Maybe they're a playoff team that just doesn't have a quarterback. I can think of the Broncos, maybe the Colts. Carson Wentz can't come back, but will they really trade him? to a division rival now we do need to see is there anybody a lot of yellow interest so we can get something for them but unfortunately there's nobody that has green interest in Gardner Minshew but what we can do is think of some teams that could use him maybe even the football team but the first like the first team I really thought of was probably the Broncos so if we go to the Broncos they do need a quarterback. Is there any teams whose number one, the Bucks' number one team need is a quarterback? Why? They have Tom Brady. Number one team need for the Colts is, oh, it's quarterback. But, like, do I actually, what is Carson's, Carson's a 72? So, do I, I don't want to trade him to a division rival, though. I just, like, feel so grimy, and I don't want him to turn out good and make me feel stupid. Football team, you know what? We'll make him move with the football team. Maybe they don't want Fitzpatrick. I don't know why I'm not asking questions. Let's get something good, though, in return. Let's try to get, we need D-line. We need D-line help, and obviously, we're not going to be able to get Chase Young. I guess it's never going to happen, but we maybe, could, we, we maybe could get one of these guys. They have so much deep tackle depth that if we could add a Duran Payne, we'd also probably have to trade some away here. But I'm just interested to see what this starts at. And okay, that's fair. That's fair. I wouldn't expect it to be traded. I just want to see every deep tackle. How close can we get in a trade? Jonathan Allen, obviously, that's not going to be accepted. Math. What about Matthew? Decline, but it looks the closest. He's a guy that could fit right in on that D line. Also, I don't care too much about Carlos Hyde. They're not really interested too much in him. It made it go up a little bit, though. So, what else do you want, football team? Can we get ourselves a decent D tackle? I, I guess at this point, it's just a draft pick I'm willing to trade away. Like, I'll trade away a fourth. Like, is this enough? Or, like, maybe a fifth? Is that enough to get Matthew? Like, a D-tackle, I mean, anchor that defensive line. It's decline. Probably will take a fourth. Maybe even taking out Carlos Hyde. Declined again. Do I really want to trade, like, a next year's third for a guy like me? I mean, I think this is worth it. I do. Decline. You know what? Let me try to find the best value possible. That's not necessarily what I expected to happen, but it did. Number one teammate for the Giants was a quarterback. We got Evan Ingram. Our biggest position of need, really, on the offensive side of the football. We got ourselves a, a, a young son who can still develop. He's exactly what we need for Trevor Lawrence. And we get him straight up. That's much better than getting just a D tackle. Decent little deal. Just getting rid of a few players. I'm actually shocked that they actually were, were interested in that wide receiver. But, I mean, we do no longer needed man hurts. We're going to have Tebow as a number two or number three. A few bench guys, some depth guys for the Cowboys. We get a six and there it is we make one final improvement before we get into the regular season carlos hyde our current starting strong safety in that six that we just got i told you guys i never understood this carlos hyde signing we're getting rid of him to a team that needs running backs for eric rowe nothing crazy but an 81 rated strong safety who is a scheme fit that will literally slot in and play immediately now it's time to get into the regular season and see if this team can compete this season let's make sure first of all that tim tebow made the roster okay he got cut all right tim come on back i don't know who made that bad decision you're gonna be the center point of this team just got rid of luke farrell don't need him for anything tim tebow's taking that spot is actually more versatile i mean why not just go ahead and check this out out, like for this first rebuild we have press conferences trevor lawrence is making his debut this week and we've seen in the past that it can be tough for rookies early on what are you expecting this week we, we want a great performance we want our quarterback to go out ball out game one get some confidence so the goal for him is to beat the texans and throw for 300 yards with trevor lawrence we're not gonna like track this the entire rebuild but i just want to see this is the first time he being in a franchise open day we had to speak to the media again how many media obligations do i freaking have so what's the key to victory dominating offense we want our young guys to go out and score 75 points game focus it's trevor's first game so we'll have a running game our 
Second year back, James Robbins is a monster. He had to rush for 150 yards. So we have to focus on our game plan as well to hopefully achieve our goal. Now we can set the season goal, which should help us a little bit. Nah, we need more than six wins. Seven wins seems solid for season number one. We get five extra staff points. We actually achieve that goal. We are going to run inside James Robinson. That is our goal moving forward. Now the question is, can we actually win week one? I mean, we're 83 rated versus 79 Houston Texans. We are playing away in Houston and we lost our right, boys with that time to go ahead and simulate to the playoffs maybe we can reach our goal of seven wins if not that sucks okay so I gotta make the camera a little bit smaller this year but hey bros we went nine and eight look at the Colts going one and 16 that is crazy I don't know what happened to them but in this first season it looks like the Bucks go 15 and 2, Chiefs go 13 and 4, Steelers having a really good season. That AFC North was insane. The crazy stuff, the Browns didn't make the playoffs. The Lions are a huge shocker going 10 and 7. My Titans making the playoffs. Thank God for that. We had a good season. A good foundational year, and the worst record in the league does go to the Colts. That's hilarious. Thank God we didn't give them Gardner. Probably gave us a lot of like easy wins this season. Now, contract extended for us, so that's great. We have to hire staff to fill our, our holes. What did we lose? Player personnel? We, we're not going to fire anybody. Now, yearly awards. Got to check this out. Mahomes, of course, wins MVP. McCaffrey in fourth. Derrick Henry comes in eighth. Alvin Kamara in tenth. I actually like this. A lot more variety here. It's not just quarterbacks. Got some running backs thrown in here, too. Coach of the year goes to Bruce Arians, of course. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Pat Mahomes. Defensive Player of the Year, Bud Dupree. That makes me happy as a Titans fan, not for the rebuild, though. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Trevor Lawrence. I'll take that. And nobody else in the top 10. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jeremiah owosu Koromoa. That's not a shocker. Again, I'm happy as a Titans fan. Caleb Farley up there. We had nobody in the top 10. Now, in the NFC, that Defensive Rookie of the Year, my boy, Zayvon Collins. Love that dude. Offensive Rookie of the Year, of course, it's Justin Fields. Kyle Pitts already an 87 rated after year number one. That is absolutely insane, my dudes. Now, Trevor Lawrence, 33 touchdowns, 14 picks, 4,600 yards. A great first season. James Robinson, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Travis Etienne, I mean, he, I always say his name wrong, like, forgive me. He, decent first season, got the end zone six times, catching the football. Marvin Jones was huge. So was Evan Ingram. DJ Chark, little lackluster. Don't know what happened to DJ there. Tip Tebow with two touchdowns, too. Let's go, Tim. Now, with that, might as well go ahead and just see who wins the Super Bowl this first season. We have four more years to go at bare minimum. We're going to sim to the Super Bowl. I would love it if my Titans make it here. I'd be such a happy boy. And it is the... Who? Okay, so it's actually New England versus the Buccaneers. That's crazy. Tom versus the New England Patriots. And the winner of Super Bowl 56 in our first simulation of a Madden 22 franchise mode. The winner is none other than who the Buccaneers go back to back. Players ready to renegotiate. A lot of very quality players we need to try and bring back. I'm, of course, going to bring back Evan Ingram. We got him, hopefully, for long term. Four-year deal solid with me. Hopefully, he'll take this. We'll up this a little bit. His bandana's messed up. $30 million contract. He's coming back. I really want DJ Chork to come back, too, because he feels like he's going to be a centerpiece of this team the entire rebuild. That's a decent contract for us. I'll give him a little bit more. Hopefully, he'll accept this, and he does. Next, Andrew Norwell. We'll give him, like, a two-year deal. Hopefully, he'll accept this. I mean, he's another guy that's, like, been a part of this team for a while. We might could even give him a three-year deal. About this, Andrew, he is going to be, he's not coming back. That sucks. Sidney Jones, I do want you to come back as well. Give you even a four-year deal. Hopefully, you'll come back. And he's coming back. Fair. AJ Ken. I mean, a one-year deal is enough for you. He's not interested in signing. Trey Herndon. I'm not too... He's only 26. Maybe I could give him a three-year deal. Bump that up just a little bit. Trey Herndon. He's coming back. Cam Robinson. He still could be solid for a while. I actually want to give him a pretty long deal. Five-year deal. I mean, I still think he has a chance to get up to the 80s. He's coming back. And I think that's really all we're going to attempt to bring back. We might make another signing. Tim Tebow, he's got to come back. He's down to a 59 overall. It's just Tim Tebow, dude. Like, we've got to bring him back. Hopefully, he signs. He wants to sign for a new team. Okay, so I guess Tim Tebow maybe won't play for us long term. David DeCastro, he's already went down tremendously. 
So I think we do need to target either a right guard in free agency or in the draft. So we have bid for a few free agents. Nothing crazy, but a few guys that could fill a role for us. Nothing way too wild. Devontae Adams is a free agent, but I'm not going to try to offer him that much money. Ronnie Harrison Jr., a really good contract. I wish it could show us what the contract was here that offered. It was like a four-year deal on like three, four mil a year. Not bad at all. We advance to the next stage of free agency. I mean, maybe we get some of these guys. Sheldon Richardson, he rejected. I gave him a, a small deal. I'm not surprised he rejected. Namikon Su is another one, and he does not accept the contract. So it looks like we're going to have to go. I want to see Devontae Adams. What did he end up signing to? Devontae Adams... It looks like he ended up going to the Jets. That is crazy. Jets signed TJ Watt and Devontae Adams. Are you serious? The Jets with Zach Wilson. Watch out for them in this rebuild. Could have won maybe two Super Bowls, honestly. Here we go, boys. First time I have done a draft in Madden 22. We've got to target ourselves an offensive lineman, maybe a defensive end or two. Why are we looking at White? We're just going to advance straight to our first pick in the draft. Give us something tasty here. It's the same kind of draft background, but for some reason, it gets very bright, and it's really, really, really annoying. As we move on, what player are we going to get here, boys? We're not going to get a quarterback. No point here. Now, a defensive end can be very tasty. He's a first-round talent, projected late first-rounder, though. Any good offensive lineman early on, there's no... They look like all oh, like bust. Maybe we get this guy in the second round, Brett Leonard. He's a projected mid-second like rounder. Maybe he is the move. Right tackle, nobody really there. It looks like our best bet, mid-first rounder for Ross McMillan, John Cooper. Early first rounder for John. We need another defensive end. I we're gonna get him. He comes in at a 77 rated. Let's go. Hidden development. What a first pick of the year. Pick number two. Now, it doesn't look like any of the offensive linemen that I wanted are still available, which is very frustrating. Now, Tyler Bolden. Like, he's some guy we maybe could get laid on. Maybe we get depth laid on for offensive line. Like, Andrew doesn't look bad. But what do we go after next? Do we have any late guys? We have scouted some outside linebackers look really good. Any other on the right side? No, it's all left outside linebackers. Maybe we just go with this guy. David Leverett, mid-second rounder. Chester Hollister, late second rounder. Maybe one of those guys is the move. We have this guy, Antoine Howard, late second rounder. Well, we really don't need a corner. A lot of safeties also scouted. Strong safeties. Some second rounders we maybe can grab in the third. But I think we're going to go with that outside linebacker on the left side. This is the first guy up. David Leverett. Looks solid. I mean, be a 70-something? He's a 72 with hidden development as well. Let's go, boys. Huge dub. This guy's still on the board. Like, we have him as an early second rounder, even though my face cam's in the way. He looks really good. I know we just got a free safety, but, like, he could play anywhere else, honestly. Steven Parker, 72 rated, the 38th best prospect in the draft. Doesn't have any crazy development trait, but, hey, that's a good depth, like, draft pick. I want to go ahead and get this guy before we miss out. One of the offensive linemen, even though we have, this is the guy I wanted, Tyler Bolin. He's protected like six. This is the four. Maybe we can wait. Maybe we can wait. Maybe we get another guy that just like we have scouted that looks to be sick. Like one of these outside linebackers look to be really good. Like I, we can't like be mad at outside linebacker depth. Mid third rounder for him. Leo is late third rounder. Then Kevin Rogers is late third rounder. So maybe it was Sidney Mont as the pick here. He's going to come in at 69. Not bad for depth at all. Has a good name, too. Round 5 pick, and he's still... Round 5 pick, he's not there anymore. This guy's still here, Carson. I guess he's better than nothing. Got to get a guard. 65 rated. We reached big time. I should have gone with my heart last pick, dude. I mean, we're just going for offensive line depth here. Hopefully, one of these guys are good. Tavares Lowry, he's a 66. Once again, it's a depth pick. That's all really these are at this point. If you get one guy that ends up being good, that's a dub. We've had a dub draft. We have a lot of good players left, actually. Tavarius Bolden on the right side. A third round. Where did I, how did I miss you? That's a decent pick in the sixth. So our final pick of our first draft in Madden 22. The only guy we have left scouted on our board really is this guy, Dale Dunlap. We've got ourselves a ton of defensive ends, but it's just depth. Just depth. 66. That is a great seventh round pick. Boy, I lied. We actually have one more pick. I forgot we got another seven. So maybe, I don't, do I just trade this away? Does anybody even want this? Because like we don't have anybody else scouted. 
So we could just take a seventh from next year, honestly. For many of these guys, really dolphins. You might suck next year. We'll take that. Just curious, since this is my first draft of the year, I want to see like who is the best player taken in the draft classes this year. Are there any 80 rateds out there? So the highest rated the entire draft class was 77 rated. So we actually didn't we end up? Yeah, we had the guy tied for highest rated in the entire draft class. Who's the fastest out there? A few 95 speed guys, a cornerback and a wide receiver. So this is really what we're working with until at least they drop the update for scouting and the drafts and everything like that in September. Hall of Fame induction. Watch the Pro Football Hall of Fame ceremony. There's no way that's real. And it just froze my game. Hello? Well, it took about seven hours, but this is cool. So when DeMarcus Ware was selected 11th overall in the 2005 NFL Draft, he became the first Troy player. I'm assuming there's some, like, audio in the background, but I didn't know. I'll have my heads up plugged in. At least there's freaking subtitles. So actually really, really cool, but I wonder how this progresses throughout franchise. Like, there can't be something like this for every single year, for every new player. So, learn from the greatest. We got plus five to finesse move for the next six weeks just from watching that. Who's out there in free agency? I just want to see if there's anybody we can sign once again the cheap one year deals to help us out this year. So, Raheem Mostert, Casey Hayward, T.Y. Hilton, not a gun, Sue. I wanted to sign you anyway. Like, we can afford you for one year. You can be a nice field gap player. We can sign a few guys. There's some decent rookie wide receivers that are undrafted free agents. Javon T. He's a little short, but I mean, he's 67 rated as an undrafted free agent. That's not bad. Decent speed as well. Same, same as this guy. 92 speed. Elijah Saunders from Clemson. We're going to take you. Maybe one of you guys can end up being half decent for us. At least have some bodies in the preseason. One thing we do need, though, is depth of the running back position because we really only have a few running backs. I probably should have drafted one just to keep that going, have some bodies back there. But we may have two running backs right now as not the greatest depth to have. We don't think anybody's super expensive. Preferably somebody that's young. So, Salvano Med, he's still out there. We have a rookie, Theo Harris, that could be decent for depth. He's a little slow, but hey, once again, it's another body back there. Have three decent running backs a day. So, I really didn't realize, like, our defense is looking great right now, but I didn't really realize how bad our offensive line regressed. We can convert Walker Little to left guard, but we need to probably, we for sure at least to get, need to get one better offensive lineman at least. I know it's nothing crazy, but we get a better left guard. Lakin Tomlinson for the free safety that we drafted. He was good depth, but we had Andrew Sisko behind him, and he didn't have anybody that wanted him. Parker had a lot of teams that we're interested in, and we get ourselves a position that we need. Cisco is going to be a great backup option of free safety. Maybe he could develop, but he wasn't even going to develop a lot because he had normal development. He wasn't going to start this year. So I think this was a good move. With that, I think it's freaking time once again, advancing all the way to the playoffs. Well, quite a stinker. How did we regress? Went 7-10 and 10 this time around. The Colts, how did they go from 1-16 to 12-5? Very disappointing season all around. I guess we just go ahead and simulate past the Super Bowl and see what happens there. So while the Colts actually made it to the Super Bowl, so they went 1-16, how did they make such a big comeback? So the Saints win the Super Bowl. Their MVP was Pete Warner. Lamar Jackson won MVP. While Defensive Player of the Year went to J.J. Watt on the Cardinals. Now, if we go in, Trevor Lawrence, we regressed offensively. It might really be that offensive line. Threw a lot more picks this season. James Robinson, I guess that's a little bit better in terms of, well, actually, he's not really better in terms of anything. Travis Etienne got a little bit better in terms of yards per carry. DJ Chark rebounded, but then you have Marvin Jones fall off quite a bit. And defensively, is anybody doing anything good for us? Miles Jack is our leader, sacks-wise. We're really not generating enough sacks. And I'm like on Sue with nine, but he's leaving us. He's getting worse. Oh, no, we got to re-sign James Robinson to a big deal. God, I want him to come back. A five-year deal. I know that's big for running back, but he's a 90 rated already. I want to give him everything possible, and he's coming back. Thank you. Same thing with Josh Allen. I know we're having thrown a lot of money, but we got to lock these guys down. We got to. Like, we, oh, it sucks that it's this and waited this long. I'll give him a six-year deal, dude. He is just that good. Boost us up. Please come back, Josh. He's coming back. Huge, huge, huge dub. Now, Brandon Linder. I'll give you a nice little two-year deal, bro. You, I mean, you'll be good for a few more years. He's testing out free agency. Our offensive line's getting worse. Josh Lambeau, like, we'll give you a one-year deal. He's not coming back. Eric Rowe, I mean, you're still good for us now. Like, a three-year deal is even, I'm, I'm like, willing to give. Free agency? 
Marvin Jones is down to a 75. Yeah, bro, you're leaving. No wonder you suck this year. Jawan Taylor? Like, do we even re-sign him? Maybe. Like, we'll give him a five-year deal. See if he wants that. He's coming back. And the rest of these guys, I really don't care too much about. All right, boys, we made some big offers. And if we want to be successful this season, we need some of these guys to sign. We have a lot of money to spend. After the first week of free agency, almost everybody accepted. Young Hoku, JJ Watt, Quentin Williams, and Quentin Nelson. We just got so much better, but the only problem is we don't have a lot of money now. But we, we have the draft. We have maybe some cheap guys we can add to the team. This can be a team I think can compete for the Super Bowl this next season. Let's go, dudes. Now, we still have some guys out there that can potentially sign for us. And it looks like nobody signed there. Is there only one more week? There's one more week left. Anybody going to sign deals? Jordan Poyer, he rejected. So really, all we need right now, to be completely honest, defensively, is a strong safety. So maybe we target that in the draft. Maybe target another corner. And then offensively, maybe just target a few offensive linemen. Maybe we can get somebody better than one of the tackles that we have right now. Maybe trade one of the tackles away. And we also probably need one more wide receiver because Marvin Jones is gone to really get that oomph. On offense, I think if we get one, like, player that's on the caliber of DJ Chark, this team, I think, is Super Bowl caliber in year three. Our first pick of the draft, come on now. We need to get ourselves somebody that can be positive for us this season. Left in, we don't need... Okay, there's nobody really that we, like, need that much. Unless we get this guy to various steal. We can get him in the late first round. So maybe we trade back, actually. Maybe we trade back. Maybe that's the move. Or maybe we get a wide out. Any good wide receivers we could add to the squad? I mean, this is the only guy we have as a first rounder. Bart Clark, late first rounder. So maybe I actually attempt to trade away. If none of these offensive linemen are I deem good enough. No, they all suck. There's some good D linemen, but we don't need D linemen. We need a middle linebacker looks good. Tyson Hoffman. Like, do we just go best player available and target a strong safety? Like maybe in a trade we're getting you that's the best player i've gotten in the last two years 81 rated second best player in the draft oh my god we have a first round grade on this guy donovan van Buren. so for our second round pick we're gonna get you good depth maybe 75 okay not horrible we have a really good grade on this guy aj bracket he's a mid second round talent this is our third round pick i'm gonna grab him 73 with hidden development. Maybe we don't need another wide receiver. Let's go, AJ. I mean, best offensive lineman I even had scouted. Marco James, we're just going to take you because you're there. 68 with hidden development again. I'm thinking maybe we, we can make some trades happen. We can make some trade happen and, like, go all out this year. I think if we add a few more pieces, maybe in trades, I think it's a team that can compete this season. I mean, we can get a strong safety at least. Dewan Wagner, decent grade on him. He's 66. Like, he'll be a good backup. So who is the best player out of this entire draft class? I'm just trying to gauge the draft classes this year. I haven't seen an 82 rated in a long time in TJ Sykes for the Bengals. The second pick. What was the number one overall pick? What was he? He Was he that bad? I haven't even seen him yet. Where's the number one overall pick? Number one pick was Marquise Allen, 73. Oh, that's just, that's a Giants pick, huh? So is it just a big thing to watch the Hall of Fame induction each year because it makes your team better at certain positions for a certain amount of time? Like, why not? The only problem is it takes about seven years for it to load in. Who is it this time? Okay, it's Darrell Revis. Like, we're seeing, it's actually pretty cool how it has his thing right there, his little trophy, his statue, but I think this is probably predetermined. And it's the same players each franchise you do for each year. I think there's probably not going to be, like, we're not going to see this for, like, Tom Brady, I wouldn't think. Maybe they have something special for Tom Brady, but, like, you're going to see this for Josh Allen when he ends up retiring your franchise 30 years down the line, or 20 years down the line, 10 years down the line, whatever. It's not going to happen. But we skip this. Like, we get plus five demand coverage for all my safeties and quarterbacks for the next six weeks. Like, that's big, though. But I highly do recommend, even though it's glitchy, if you're trying to make your team as good as possible, watch the freaking preseason Hall of Fame ceremony induction thing. Like, it just makes your team better. It takes you two seconds. Just like it takes you two seconds to click that subscription button, boys. Trying to hit a mil by the end of the year. I'm gonna try to make some trades, boys, but the only problem is they don't have much cap room. We gotta go for some cheaper players, some cheaper options. How am I supposed to trade for right tackles? It has two options for left tackles. So my right tackles never show up as possible trade 
things. Yep, boys. Well, apparently I'm not gonna be able to trade for any right tackles or trade my right tackle away because he's not here, even though it's a team need. Their right tackles are there. I just can't trade my own. Wow, and look who the Patriots signed. I'm trying to make trades, and of course they went out and got Aaron Rodgers. Okay, I like this trade. So we get Rondell Moore. If Brandon Linder back to be our starting center, we had to trade Cam Robinson. We're going to replace him, but we got a starting center and Rondell Moore, who's still young and he's good. 76 rated. Could at least be our punt and kick returner. I mean, he's better than what we currently have. Mike McLickney from the 49ers for Joe Schobert. I mean, he's our third middle linebacker now. He's worth 12 mil a year towards our cap hit. We get a position of need while getting money. We did have to trade away second, but like, I still think it's a good deal. Wait, I guess while we're here, who's the best available free agent? that we can get on a one-year deal. There's got to be some good guys. Bryce Callahan? Like, we spend that money if we can. Five-year, a one-year deal? Five mil a year for an 85 corner? Don't mind if I do. Boys, I told you that business is booming. We get a decent replacement at Strong Safety, Jaquiski Tart. It's going to be solid. And Orlando Brown for our second D-tackle, who we now have a nice rookie D-tackle who can fill his spot. In Trey Herndon, we have a bunch of good corners, but they're just all not getting playing time. We did have to trade away a second for next year, but this, I think, could be the move to make this team Super Bowl caliber. Yeah, boys, this team is so stacked. We have an 81-plus offensive line, Evan Ingram at tight end. We have a wide receiver core, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, a rookie 74 rated bracket who's going to be a star. Technically, Rondell Moore as well, who's going to be a punt and kick returner. Colin Johnson as a five. Obviously, 91 rated James Robinson. So got Travis back there too. Backup running back and play receiver too. And defensively, we are stacked. We have like one of the best linebacker cores in the league. Maybe we could, maybe do we go all out and try to just say screw it, trade away Jason and then replace him as well? Maybe that's the move, and maybe that's, like, literally, we have an all-star team if we can make this happen. Doing some wheeling and dealing. We get another first-round pick from the Cowboys. Had to trade away Chasen, Clay Brooks, who is our sixth corner, and a third for next year, but we are about to make a huge splash. So I know this doesn't seem huge, but it is really all we could afford. A first in Sidney Jones for Leighton Vander Esch from the Steelers and a third as well. So we get to kind of save a draft pick slot as well if this isn't the year we end up winning the Super Bowl. I think that's all we have, boys. That's all we can do. We just create ourselves an absolute superstar roster. I know it's been higher rated potentially in this rebuild up to this point. But, like, this is, I think, the most complete roster. We have literally zero holes at this point. Offensive line, great. Great weapons on offense. Defensively, linebacker core has depth. It's freaking loaded with talent. Safeties are great. Our corners are solid. A bunch of depth there. D-line has a mixture of veterans and young guys. This is a Super Bowl caliber team. Let's get it done, dude. Boys, let's go. What a season. 14-3. 89 overall we end up at 87 defense 87 whoa hold on i just messed up they are gonna definitely break my brain this year the offense like overall is now first and the overall is third okay so we're 87 overall 89 offense 87 defense still absolutely solid we have upgrades that we can complete right here we are oh, it was dj chark up to an 86 rated he's balling now we have 28 franchise staff points that i'm gonna use as well before we get into this playoffs we actually I don't have a, I have a first round buy, right? I have the best record in the league. I got it. Dude, nobody went better than 14 and three, right? We, oh no, well, of course the Cowboys 15 and two, but now we get a first round buy in the AFC. So we can go ahead and advance to next week to see we're taking on in the divisional round, get more points, more upgrades if need be. And we're taking on, hello, who are we playing? The Denver Broncos, nine and eight on the year, boys. That should be an easy dub. Have to see what, what happened this season, the playoff bracket. Any shockers make the playoffs? At this point, we were three years in. I mean, it looks like the Cowboys and us, we got the first round buy. I mean, the Jets, we saw them make some big moves there, you know, doing well. They did lose the first round already. We do need to look at everything else really quick. Press conference, the first of many. So hopefully, like, it actually isn't because hopefully when the Super Bowl here, the rebuild's over with. So how important is your first playoff win? Oh, it's a guaranteed win, bro. What do you mean, dude? We're coming out here, we're beating this 9-8 and eight team. So we have to beat the Broncos to earn bonus staff points this season. So that's not good. So they got bulletin board material, which I think is actually a really cool addition to Fran. 
franchise mode. Now, I do want to see MVP ends up going to Ezekiel Elliott three years and a bunch of running backs on this list. Justin Fields up there as well. We have everybody in the top 10. Coach of the year goes to, of course, Shears truly Mr. Sylvester. Now, passing Trevor Lawrence, like I had a great season. 40 touchdowns. He limited the interceptions. That's why it probably went 14 3 this year. James Robinson, career year, bro. Etienne still being a solid backup, probably getting some receiving yards as well. Yeah, he had 4 to 29. But he didn't have a 1,000 yard receiver, but that's why I like this wide receiver core because they all kind of split the production across the board. Now, defensively, who's our leader? It's got to be JJ Watt right now. Miles Jack. Still leading the team with tackles. But J.J. Watt with 19 sacks. That was our problem, dude. The last few years, this could be the year. This really could be the year, dudes. Here it is, dudes. 9 and 8 different Broncos are going to beat us, right? They're going to beat us. No, we get the dub. Oh, God. Have to take on Baltimore Ravens. I'm assuming Lamar Jackson. So they have 99 Moreland Humphrey. Now, the first of many, what does this even do? Is this bring me to a press conference screen? No, we're talking to somebody. My assistant GM, we called the shot. That's cool. Dub Lee points. I don't know what that means, but you've earned 10 staff points. I'll take that, bro. Now we have 11. We're using them each week. So if you guys are curious at this point, really quick, I do want to look, since this is our first rebuild of the year, at this point, I do have it kind of auto-upgrading the skill trees for all of our staff members. They should be pretty stacked at this point. So we look at us. Look at our talent tree at this point. We've got this completely maxed out. So all of this stuff is really helping out for our coordinators. Kind of like staff modification stuff. We haven't done the player growth thing, which is really weird. The CPU's been doing all that. We have Brett Perkins. Our offensive coordinator, he has swagged out, bro. We are getting so many boosts from him. And the thing is, he could, I think, end up becoming a head coach somewhere else, which, like, we would obviously have to start from, like, square one. And then Mark Anderson, at this point, he is swagged out to completely maxed out. I'm surprised these guys are still our coordinators and haven't left for elsewhere. I don't want my entire 10 hours in this EA Access trial to be on one rebuild. I want to get it done now. Come on, come on, come on. I don't know. Did we win? What is that? How do I know if I won? Did I win? I, do I just advance? I don't know. Oh, we won. Yes, it's there. 28-17. Let's go. Super Bowl week against the Cowboys. Oh, God. It's the two teams that actually had the best records. They had a better record than us. They have a 91 offense. Their defense is stinky. We should be winning this game. It's in Las Vegas. Now we have a lot of stuff we need to take care of because I want to be maxed out. What does he even do here? He's a 99 rated already. He's upgraded. We do have a Super Bowl media day. So this is cool. First time I'm get, like, getting to witness this, it's the same cutscene. So what would it mean to you to win a Lombardi Trophy? Everything. It's not just the beginning, because it's actually technically the end if we end up winning here. So we earned 10 staff points, which is obviously a big dub. Press conference, hot opponent. So our hot opponent, obviously, is the Cowboys went 15-2 and two during the regular season. We got to be confident. That's what we're going to say. We're not going to insult them. Hot streak. So the Cowboys players are playing well and have... 10 plus break tackle why does that help us because it all comes down to this we are actually going to jump into the super bowl we're not going to play it we're going to sim from there we're going to simulate the strategy we're getting into this thing boys can we end off our first rebuild of madden 22 as super bowl champions in just year three with the jags bro because two i want to see if we end up winning this i want to see the super bowl celebration as well i want to see the presentation there's like an old school scoreboard here, obviously. This is on next gen too, so I don't know what the difference is necessarily in the Super Bowl presentation is going to be in next gen and old gen, but the fans are obviously a lot more detailed in the next gen version of Madden 22. Dak is still here for the Cowboys. It's here we are, Jaguars. Can we end the rebuild? There was J.J. Watt leading the tunnel run, whatever. There was Trevor Lawrence. Super Bowl. What Super Bowl would this be? I don't know, but the Super Bowl pre presentation obviously is different. First time I am able to see it. Now, coin toss time. We're going to go ahead, skip this, get straight into the simulation to see if we can win Super Bowl 55. We're going to fast forward. We're going we're gonna to just jump forward to the end of the game. We can pause if we need to. So, we look like we're going to take a 7 to nothing lead. Boys, we're up 10 nothing. Cowboys score. We're going to score as well. Boys, we're up 24-7. to It's looking good. Let's wear the Falcons. We, we don't pull Falcons here. It looks like your boy...
is going to be successful in rebuild number one as your Jacksonville Jaguars are now Super Bowl champions for the first time in franchise history. Mr. Sylvester gets it done, the rebuild king. Plenty of these coming throughout the year. Oh, you guys, let me know in the comment section below what team you want me to rebuild next. A bunch of content coming on the secondary channels as well. We're starting a franchise series today, so make sure you have your notifications on so you can see what team we're starting that with. And we're also going to start facing the franchise too. We're going to be streaming on RBTV later today. Bunch of stuff coming, bros. Super Bowl celebration. Make sure you guys are subscribed. So we can try to hit a mil before the end of the year. Click that button. Leave a like if you haven't for our first Super Bowl win of Madden 22. Trevor's happy. I'm happy. And now I can quit wasting my EA access time. If you got through that without falling asleep, make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video if you haven't. If you want to watch more, you can click the screen to watch my previous video. The other one is a video YouTube thinks you would like. Make sure to check out all my other channels, link in the description box below. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz, and become a channel member if you haven't. Got a TikTok too. Just click subscribe and follow on all those accounts. Takes you two seconds.